It's Almighty from the future here <laughs> and uh, I'm actually in the middle of editing my video. There's one important thing I want to talk about and um, something's been brought to my attention. I've been getting comments here and there saying welcome back. <laughs> I never left. <laughs> I've been here all along so it is a bit odd uh, and I've been getting people message me saying that they're not seeing you know my content appear or anything like this so apparently the algorithm's not done something. I looked into it and apparently it's a thing. Not only do people have to subscribe People have to ring a stupid bell and not only ring a bell, they have to click on the bell and ring all uh, and click all and it's ridiculous. But I'm not about badgering uh, you guys to like subscribe and all this, right? Because and that's why I don't do it, because I'm not somebody who chases the algorithm. I'm not into pulling stupid faces on um, clickbait thumbnails. I'm here because I have an interest and a passion in a lot of things. I'm very creative and um, I love sharing that passion with you all. I hate badgering for this, but could you please, you know, and you won't see my content unless you subscribe, ring that bell and click all. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna do a, a full on video about this, right? Because it, it is frustrating. But for now, I will let you enjoy this video, yeah. Good morning and welcome. Now today's gonna to be quite an involved day and that is because there's a lot of recording to do and a lot of setting up to do. And that is because I have finally completed my album, the album which I've been working on for about a year. <laughs> but yeah, finally it's done. And I'm like really happy that it's completed. And you know, by the time this is up, the album's gonna be up there on Bandcamp. So, you know, the link's down there below. <laughs> so yeah, please do enjoy and please do share with your friends and share on social media. <laughs> The actual album has last summer's vibes to it, as well as this summer's vibes. So it's kind of like there's a lot going on. It's quite wholesome in a sense. And there's also a lot of different ways I've created the different tracks. Just to break it down, three tracks have been created on the Amiga, uh, completely on the Amiga. One track is uh, completely on Sid and uh, the rest of them are on Polyan Tracker. But I have got like um, synthesizers here and there connected to it. So, you know, quite a wholesome album, I think, and I'm quite proud of it. So anyway, I hope you do enjoy and let's get started. Okay, so this uh, track, Summer Wave, uh, it not only uses, um, of course, you know, it's a mod. It not only uses uh, the samples, it also uses every now and then the um, chords from the Cobalt 8, but it also uses a Therapsid for some of the lead and also the DX7. I'm going to call it the DX7. I know it's a DX7, but 
the X7, same thing, it's just a modular version of it. Um, it uses the DX7, a couple instruments from there, um, the strings from there. So it's, I have to set this up in the sense of sub daisy chain these, daisy chained these three. And uh, if I just isolate the tracks here, now this part is gonna be the thrapsid. Now you have here, let's actually isolate these three and I'll show you the DX7. I can control the, the levels of each here. The thing is you don't realize just how much time it takes to get all the levels right, everything sounding right and you know it takes a long time per track even because obviously it's different per track. It's not just a simple you know just play it and record it. There's so much going on here that you have to kind of get the levels right, make sure it sounds good, make sure it doesn't sound you know so it's like well it's, it's called mastering really. Put these two together, the DX7 and the Thrapsid as well as the Pallian Tracker of course. Okay, so something sounds a bit quiet on the Thrapsid end, so I'm gonna have to... Okay, finally got it sounding right. Okay, so that's the um, model here. Change that, and then the next one. Right, it's uh, Thrapsid, and of course the mod itself is going to have its own samples. That's always in the background, but there will be at certain points um, the Cobalt Eight playing the actual chords in the background. At some point there will be the DX Seven uh, playing the chords and the Thrapsid playing some of the leads. So it's like it'll switch over depending on what I've programmed there. So. So let's kind of show you an example. Right, so let's put the samples down. So that's the Cobalt 8. And the next one that's going to come. So that's the Thrapsid and the DX7. And of course, if you mix the samples in. So that's how it's basically you got a lot of things to sort of get the levels right and everything so before you make the final master recording um, which I'm doing via the focus right and then going into audacity at like 32 bit <laughs> so yeah that is the setup for the current song now the next song is going to change completely <laughs> you know it's gonna I'm gonna have to get the SY22 here instead of the cobble and then just like wire everything up again
those where a track just needs to be recorded straight from how I've created it there. I just don't have the heart to mess with it. It's just, there's some like moving reason why I created this. I mean, I, actually there's a moving reason why I created all of them, but this one in particular, it's got a deep spiritual meaning and I just don't want to touch it. So there's no MIDI involved in this particular track or anything like that. It's just being recorded straight from polyends and samples. It just goes to show that there's not one best way to record everything. There's not one, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have the world's best everything, you know. At the end of the day, a work of art is a work of art. Whether you use, you know, the, the world's best <laughs> equipment to create it, or you just use something simple like a tracker, an 8-channel one. Or even use an Amiga for it. It's just like using different paint mediums. Some people like to paint in oils, some in oil pastels, other in watercolor. You know, it kind of depends, really, doesn't it? What feeling you're trying to portray. I'm going to talk about something uh, a little later on, but essentially my way of writing music, it changes. Even though Polyan Tracker and Amiga are both trackers, right? I mean, uh, Sound Tracker and Amiga, sorry. I write different kind of music on Amiga than I do here. It's just, I don't know. It's just a little different. My way of writing changes. It's just like how you're using different mediums. If you uh, paint with oils, your technique and your way changes a little bit. Or if you, and then you do it with watercolor, you, your way, your artwork is, you know, it varies, it changes, in other words. Anyway, I make sense to myself in my own mind. Whether it makes sense to you or not, I don't know, but <laughs> I make sense to myself. Another thing I kind of miss in the older one is the MIDI through port. I kind of need that sometimes. Like a hardware MIDI through port, not a soft one. And yes, the same power supply works on both, thankfully. Things on the Yamaha SY22, there is a clear uh, voice bank and MIDI channel assign thing going on which you can do and you know more than one um, voice on this right but I cannot find that on the cobalt like I cannot get it to do assign like a certain voice on to a certain channel you know I mean thankfully I've not needed to do that um, well this time around but it'd be nice to in future if um, if anyone knows if I'm able to do that you know what I mean like uh, assign a voice to a, a different voice to each channel. Um, I could do that with this, even though it's a faf, but I cannot find a way to do it with the cobalt, the cobalt eight. If anyone knows of that, if how to do it, if you, if it's even possible to do it, then you know, please let me know. So what's cool about this is that 
this is like I'm um, going vintage with this as well. <laughs> I'm gonna be including the DX7 uh, along with uh, the SY22 and of course uh, the SIDS the as well with the Therap SID. Right, so I've programmed my bank here now. Um, as you can see, one. I've had to do it, um, just take the, because you've got the multi one. I've had to assign the first slot in the bank it has to be channel 11 because obviously the um, Therap SIDS going through channel one. Um, it'll just, I mean, it won't clash or anything. What will happen is that it'll play the Thrapsid at the same time as that. So, uh, channel, well, bank, uh, slot 2 is channel 12. And then it goes 3, 4, 5 because there's nothing after that. So, channel, uh, basically the channel 2 is the um, DX7 module. So, channel 11 will be main lead. Channel 12 will be Voyager. Uh, channel, which is what I want straight away, is uh, channel 3, 12 string, synth bass, uh, VCO sync, RPG8, and evolver. What? Why stupid drum kit there? Oh my god, I've got an extra slot. I can actually. I forgot about this. I thought I just signed it. Okay. There we go, VCO lead. So we've got all of them now. We want VCO sync, revolver, VCO lead, and then we have these. Okay, brilliant. So did my bang out. So we have here, if, you, if we play it, on this highlighted bit, uh, instrument 18, or sample 18, I should say, that's a 12 string, but it's a sample of a 12 string, and I think it's from um, the PSS 51. Let's isolate that. That one right so let's make it into this one uh we assign it to um the sy22 12 synth 12 string which is channel three there right so there we go kind of a little different but still nice and it's obviously going to be like Full stereo and everything. That's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to kind of like add some dynamic to any sample that I've used that's in from any of these synthesizers. So we have that. And let's try any other. And obviously, you can mix the um, uh, Yamaha SY22, you know, with these sliders here. Okay. That's loud. What I can do, put the uh, velocity down. If you were to take this down, different um, voices on the um, SY22 will be have different levels. So you cannot keep doing this up and down. So you can adjust the velocity on here for each instrument. Uh, so MIDI channel 11, the velocity on that. I can make it like less so it's not as loud. Okay, so this one is new to me. I use the FR horn, which I'm assuming is a French horn. I normally, if you know me, <laughs> you'll know that I avoid um, brass instruments. They just, I'm sorry, but they just sound too farty for me <laughs> to use in this, I mean. I, but every now and then, it's like for me, you have like a little horn in the background and it can sound quite eerie and spacey and sort of, you know what I mean? There's a hauntingness about it. If you use it right, that's what I'm trying to do here. Now let's isolate this. No, no, I have this as a MIDI um, assigned voice because I sampled it from the SY22. That is on channel six. Oh, that's the one I want. Oh my God. It's got so much more depth. Okay, let's try it. Okay, perfect. 
just the effect I want, even more than the sample. You know, I'm starting to really love this Yamaha SY22 synthesizer the more I use it. It's just like you can do more than one instrument. It's like the bank of instruments, you can program that. And the sounds are just so cinematic. And, you know, I, 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 <laughs> I want to keep it. <laughs> you know, I know it's not technically mine. Rich um, says, just keep it because he really likes it. Yeah, and he heard it and he was just like, oh, this is something else. I really, really love it. Um, and. I'm starting to really agree now. So essentially it is kind of the DX series sounds, but it's just adapted for the, you know, for a vector synth like this. So yeah, definitely, definitely I'm, I think I'm gonna keep this now, but it's, I'm actually quite excited because this one track, at least one track is using quite a few of this, uh, of um, uh, voices from here via MIDI. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of excited about that. So let's carry on <laughs> when I record this track.
Thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. Also, I do more than create videos, so for more content, don't forget to check out my website as it contains all what I do. I update my blog fairly regularly, by the way. I am very happy with how I've designed my website and wish to thank Rich Garbutt for all the hard work and effort he's put into making it all work. Also, a big thank you goes to my top tier patrons. Rich Garbutt, Axel Dominator, Electronskip UK, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Starglider77, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Chris Sablinski, and Veronica Explains. No matter what, the Patreon tier, each of you who choose to support me genuinely out of the goodness of your heart deserves appreciation. Hence, the least I can do to show my thanks is list your names in my video, regardless of tier. Thank you again to all of you who genuinely support me. I'm really touched by it. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Until next time, adios.